Hi, I'm Julie Dialessi Laffley. I'm a partner at Bacon and Wilson, and I specialize my practice in the areas of family law, estate planning, and general business practice. Today we're going to be talking about a, an alternative dispute resolution method called collaborative law. Collaborative law differs than the other traditional dispute resolution methods because it is one newer. The collaborative law professionals need to be certified as collaborative law professionals. So the attorneys who are collaborative law attorneys have gone through a very specific training and have been certified to practice in this area. Additionally, it differs from mediation and arbitration, which are the other two more traditional methods of alternative dispute me resolution, because the parties to a collaborative law process agree by contract that they will not enter into litigation. So they will not file a complaint for divorce, custody, support, whatever the issue is, until they have gone through this collaborative process. Um, by contracting to do that, the attorneys also are agreeing that they will not represent the parties outside of the collaborative law process if the process does not end in a resolution. So as a collaborative law attorney, if I am representing an individual during a collaborative law matter, then I cannot later on file suit on that issue if we're unable to come to an agreement. It is not to say I couldn't represent them on another legal matter, but in this particular issue, I could not then represent them in the litigation. The parties to a collaborative law process are doing exactly what the name indicates. They are collaborating. They're working together to come to an agreement that they both can live with. Studies have shown, the courts encourage, and parties would probably agree that when you are working together to come to an agreement, you are more likely to live with it more happily than you would be if it was a court order or was something that you entered into without your own free will, if you will. So by going through the collaborative law process, you are giving yourself the opportunity to come to an agreement through negotiation and collaborative work with the other side without having that pink elephant in the room that someone's going to rush off to court and file a motion. So it gives the parties some relaxation in the sense that they don't have that feeling of pressure upon them. The other tenant of collaborative law, which is actually quite interesting, is that we bring in other collaborative professionals. So you may use a financial planner who is collaborative certified, or an accountant who has specialized in collaborative law, or a therapist, or all of the above. And the use of all of these professionals, in addition to the attorney, is to allow the parties to get the experience and the expertise of these individuals who have a different approach to resolution, an approach of working together as opposed to litigation and adversarial attitudes towards the resolution of the matter. By engaging in collaborative law, a party can expect to attend a meeting or multiple meetings and know what those meetings will entail as everyone is required to agree on an agenda. So you wouldn't walk into a meeting and be blindsided by an issue that you didn't know was going to come up. It gives individuals an opportunity to be prepared emotionally as well as from the perspective of the facts so that you are uh, able to have a very productive meeting and get through those agenda items. Some agendas will be short and some will be long and that would all be indicative as to the complexity of the issues that need to be resolved. Um, the commitment to collaborative is one that parties are uh, becoming more exposed to because it is becoming a more common method of dispute resolution and I would encourage anyone who is looking for a respectful, efficient, and less expensive approach to resolution to investigate collaborative law. Thank you. I'm Julie Dialessi Laffley, an attorney at Bacon and Wilson, specializing in the areas of family law. And if you are contemplating a divorce and would like more information about alternative dispute resolution, in particular collaborative law, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.